This literally might be the best disc ever. You're beat into perfection. I just can't even imagine disc golf without it. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. This week, we're going to talk about a topic that many people haven't actually made a video on. It's something people who've been playing a while know how to do, but beginners can feel super lost on. How do we beat in a disc? Before we dive deeper into the video, I feel like I need to explain what it means to beat in a disc and also why you would wanna beat in a disc. So it's time for some definitions. A beat in disc is a disc that has been used or seasoned beyond its original flight characteristics, giving the disc an either slightly modified flight or a different flight entirely. We've talked about the flight numbers of a disc being how the disc is supposed to fly when it's thrown at its proper speed and power thresholds. But when a disc becomes beat in, it no longer flies necessarily like those flight numbers and usually the threshold to reach that desired flight is also lowered. At the end of the day, we're throwing plastic and plastic eventually wears down. Bringing us to the question of why would you want to beat a disc in? Well, there are really two major reasons for this. The first is to make a disc actually usable. Many people have a hard time throwing certain molds because they just can't get the flight out of them that they're looking for. But like I said, a beat-in disc flies a little bit differently and usually requires less power to reach that intended flight, which is the other reason you would want a beat-in disc. The more you use a disc, the more you learn how it flies and you get used to the lines that you can actually produce with that disc. You've heard me talk about this pig before and it is my precious child. The reason is that this pig is so beat-in, I know exactly what it's going to do when it comes out of my hand and I know exactly what angles I can put it on to get those flights. I carry three pigs in my bag. One is brand new, one is my current workhorse, and the other is my precious child. Throwing them all on a simple hyzer can create three very different lines simply because of how beat in they all are. The best part about beating in a disc is not only how comfortable and familiar you get with the disc, but often it can create a flight that doesn't exist elsewhere on the disc golf market. So with all that said, I've got a few methods I believe you can use to start beating in your plastic as soon as possible. Before before diving into those tips though, I realized that lots of you are not subscribed and that's okay. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're checking it out. If you find this content helpful or I'm a little weird, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I always hope that the content is at least helpful or entertaining and sometimes maybe both. When it comes to beating in a disc, we need to remember two important factors. The first is that no matter how much you beat a disc in, there are some molds that are still going to fly a certain way. A tilt, for instance, no matter how many times you chuck it against a tree or hit the ground is still going to be ridiculously over. Stable. The second thing is that rather than looking for a beat in version of a certain mold, it might just be best to start with another mold entirely that's going to fly more like your intended flight path right out of the box. It hurts deep, deep in your soul to lose that disc that you've been working on for a long time. And it's even harder to replace it. So finding discs that fly like the way you want them to at the start is always a safer option for the longevity of your game. But I'm not trying to deter anyone. Let's talk about how you can beat in a disc. The first and most common option people use is throwing them against really hard things really hard. Yeah, I know I said the same thing twice, but trust me, it makes sense. Often when people want to beat in a disc, they'll take them and try to throw them into a tree about three feet away from them as hard as they possibly can. While this does work in wearing down the durability of your disc, thus beating it in, I really don't suggest this method because if you hit it too hard, you could chunk the disc and ruin it before you even get the opportunity to throw it. Other people suggest throwing it not into trees, but onto pavement and skidding it up. I also don't love this method because I think it scratches your disc up, which makes it really uncomfortable to throw in your hand. So if you just want to throw it into things, my suggestion is sky spike hyzers. Take your disc, throw them as high into the air as you can, and let them spike into the ground as hard as they want. In this method, you're letting gravity do the work, and usually it's not a really hard surface you're spiking into, which means that you're not going to chunk the disc and make it really uncomfortable to have in your hand. This can be effective in beating in your disc, but some of the cons are that it takes a really long time, and it's also not really fun. Thus bringing us to my favorite ways to beat in the disc. The first is the second shot method. 
When you're out playing your normal rounds, tell your friends, hey, I'm in the process of beating this disc in. So after every single one of your shots, you're gonna step up and throw that disc just like you would a normal shot. Maybe don't take like the full time lining everything up because that's gonna take way long to play, but just make sure that you're throwing it all throughout your round. The cool part about this method is that you don't really care about the results of what happens with that disc because it's a second shot. If it hits a tree, great. You're just doing your job even better. Another critical piece of this method is that make sure you're using it while you putt as well. Having the disc come in contact with the chains is going to beat it in, although not as aggressively as spiking it straight into a tree. And we're okay with that. In fact, we prefer it. The pro of this method is that you can do it alongside your normal disc golf rounds without feeling like you're doing anything special. The con is that your friends may really dislike you because you are officially the second shot guy. Thus bringing us to an even faster method, and that is the one disc round. Rather than throwing the disc you're trying to beat in as a second shot every time, go to the course and just take that one disc and maybe a putting putter. You're going to throw that disc on every single shot, up shots, drives, turnovers, once again, putting included. The pros of this method are that it will beat the disc in pretty quickly, and you'll also become incredibly familiar with the disc really fast. But for some of you, you don't have time for the second shot method or the one disc round method. I have a final solution for you, but before we dive into that, I wanna make sure that we talk about what types of discs beat in best. The answer is all of them. There are tons of used discs in there, and someone's already done lots of the hard work for you. Not only do you get the benefit of gaining from their experience on the disc, but as my homie Jesse would say, we're also doing our part with those used discs to reduce plastic consumption and thus save our planet just a little bit at a time. I hope I said that right. Jesse, if I'm still missing the mark, please let me know and we'll talk. When it comes to beating in a disc, the base plastics like DX and Eco plastic will beat in faster, which makes them get to that precious sweet spot state even sooner. Premium plastics will take longer to beat in, but once they reach that sweet spot, they'll hold it for even longer. Another thing to note is that beating a disc in takes it to the next degree of extremes. A beat in overstable disc is going to lean more towards the neutral category. A neutral disc is going to lean towards the understable and the understable beat in disc is going to get crazy flippy. All of these discs have a place, but my favorite types of discs to beat in are overstable ones. Like I mentioned in the beginning, no matter how much you beat a disc in, it's still going to retain some of its natural flight characteristics. If you take an overstable disc and beat it in, it's always going to retain a little bit of that, which means that you can reliably throw it on some massive Anheusers without ever worrying about it falling out of that shot and turning into a roller. Once again, beat in discs become like an anomaly out there in the world, having flight numbers that just don't exist in certain molds. And that's amazing. So what's the super secret, super fast method I use? You're gonna need a couple tools here. First, the disc you wanna beat in. Second, you're gonna need to find yourself the harbinger of heat a dryer. Third, you're gonna need blankets. Not just some blankets, a lot of blankets. We are not trying to break anybody's dryers right now. What you're gonna do is take your disc, wrap it in all of the blankets, and take those blankets and put them inside of the dryer. Next, set the dryer to a low heat setting and run it for 10 minutes. You don't need some super special blanket, it's just to make sure the dryer doesn't get dented. After 10 minutes, you're gonna pull that disc out and be careful, it might be kinda warm. While it's in this warm state though, you're going to take the edges and bend them down over and over again. Do this for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then leave the disc sitting flat on a table. Don't put it back in your bag immediately. Just make sure that it can rest flat on a table and cool off. This will beat in your disc incredibly fast without ever worrying about you chunking it for throwing it into a tree. The pro of this method is that you could buy a disc, preferably from OTB Discs, and use code RC Disc Golf at checkout, wink, wink, and beat it in in the same day. The con is that you won't know how much you're beating the disc in until you get out there and throw it. I've used this method before and taken the disc way past past its point of usability simply because I overworked the disc and bent it for way too long. I would always err on the side of caution when it comes to overworking the disc, realizing that if you want more beat in state, you can just put it back in the dryer for another cycle. I personally love this method, and when I haven't done due diligence in cycling my discs and have a backup ready, it is definitely helpful to put a new workhorse in the bag and get it nice and seasoned really fast. All in all, these are just a few of my favorite methods that I love using, but I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of your favorite ways to beat in a disc? And what are some crazy methods that you've heard of out there? I hope you get the joy of throwing a beautifully beat in disc sometime soon. Because trust me, they are amazing when you get them to that point of perfection. Isn't that right, my precious child? You are the best piggy out there, is you are. Sorry about that. Things probably got a little weird there. Thanks for coming by. I hope you have an amazing week. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.